Good morning, church. Good morning. It is good to be together. Uh, and uh, we are um, just a delight. If you're a visitor, um, I'm aware we've got our baptism services this afternoon. So if you are a visitor or a guest, a family member coming to celebrate the baptisms, you are very, very welcome. My name is Sarah. Um, and at the end of the service, um, if you would like to come and say hello to us, we have our wee contact point uh, down the end of the concourse. Do come and say hello. Uh, we'd love to just touch base with you, to chat with you, uh, to make you feel welcome and tell us a little bit about our, uh, ourselves. Uh, so this morning, as I'm sure you will know, is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> So we're going to start this morning with a prayer uh, uh, for all women, actually, as we celebrate this day. So let's pray together, shall we? Lord, for mothers today, we pray joy. For orphans, comfort. For not yet mothers, hope. For single mothers, grace. For the lonely, family. May there be moments of comfort and hope today for the mothers of prodigals. The mothers who've lost children. And the mothers who don't know where their children are. May the embrace of your grace displace shame for mothers in prison, for mothers who feel they've failed, and for mothers who can't be with their kids. May those who have never held their own child for whom today may be sadder than it is happy. May you know the love and joy of parenting in the family of God. And we speak over you the words of Isaiah 63, 13. As a mother comforts her child, so I, the Lord, will comfort you. And you will be comforted. And finally, gracious Father, we thank you for every woman here today and for every woman that we brought with us in our hearts. Reveal your purpose and plan for our lives. Bless these amazing women and protect them. Deepen their love and trust of you. Strengthen them, empower them, anoint them with your Holy Spirit, that their faith, influence, and achievement would bring you honor and glory. Receive our thanks and praise again for these women, for they are precious to us and to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. If you're able, why don't you stand? We're going to uh, sing our hymn together.
do indeed give you our praise and our honor and our glory for you alone are worthy for you alone are worthy because you have done great things for us and we just praise you for that in Jesus name amen amen please take your seats We are going to take a few moments to do uh, to have our family news. Uh, so the first one is because it's Mother's Day, we have got uh, some daffodils available after this morning service for all women, all women. So please, as you leave uh, or at the end of the service, because I hope, we're hoping that you're staying for the baptisms, but the end of the 10:30 service, please do go and pick up uh, your uh, daffodils, uh, lovely ladies. Uh, so, baptisms, you've already heard me talking about this. Uh, we are going to start for uh, our baptism service at one o'clock. So, we are encouraging you to stay after the service. We hope many of you have brought your packed lunch. If you haven't, there's a Scott mid down the road. We can direct you. Go and get your sandwiches. Go and get your pasta salad and come back. Let's have lunch together. And then we're going to celebrate um, the baptisms. We've got four young people and two adults being baptized this afternoon from one o'clock. So, do stay uh, for that. Um, be, and because we've got baptisms, there's no evening service tonight, church family. So just be aware of that. Um, Kaylee tickets are still available. Um, if you have any questions about the Kaylee, do speak to the lovely Andrea Brewster, who's waving over there. Um, the Kaylee is for all church family and guests, if you want to bring some guests as well. So it's next Friday, the 15th of March, or this coming Friday, whichever way your head works with weeks. It's this coming Friday, the 15th of March, and it's here in the, in the concourse from 7 till 9 o'clock. So do get your Kaylee tickets. Um, Next, next weekend, next weekend, we are looking forward uh, to a team from Bethel uh, joining us for the weekend. Uh, they're going to be joining us for the Cayley on the Friday night. On the Saturday, they're going to be doing some outreach in the community. And then on Sunday, there'll be an opportunity for us uh, to receive from them prophetic words and prayer. So that's going to be after the 10.30 service next Sunday morning. So do uh, come along. Uh, do make the most of that opportunity. And we also just want to thank those in our church family who are putting these guys up for the weekend or giving them a bed uh, for the weekend. So thank you, guys. We really appreciate that. <clears throat> and then we just want to go over our Easter plans with you. So you can see there uh, that we have our Monday, Thursday uh, service. Uh, we have our Good Friday service. So there's going to be two of those between two and four for families. And then between 7.30 and 9, uh, they're in the ministry center. No, they're not. They're in Ladycroft. Uh, and they are going to be dropping. So do come along uh, for those. And then on the Saturday, Easter Saturday, we have our Spirit Cafe. Uh, so that is going to be in the ministry centre. You see, that's why my head was ahead of the game there. That is going to be in the ministry centre. So do be thinking and praying about who you could bring uh, to the um, Spirit Cafe. And then on the Sunday, we have our church family celebration, Easter Sunday morning. And then at 7.30, the, we, the Origin Resurrection event is happening in the Usher Hall. And as a church, we are encouraging you to let's go. Let's go and support this event. Let's go and worship our risen uh, Lord Jesus together. I think that's all the family notices. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on and let's turn our attention to our liturgy. So our liturgy is something that just allows our hearts and our minds to be refocused again on our Lord Jesus. So let's do that. Um, the words will come up on the screen and you guys say the bits that are in italics. Okay. Oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall claim your grace. Give us the joy of your saving help. 
we have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, and to seek forgiveness for our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Let's say this prayer of repentance together. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you're able, I'm going to invite you to stand. And we're going to say our final responses and then our canticle, which is glory to God. Blessed is the Lord. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy. Let's say our canticle. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's worship.
there's a weight on some certain songs that we believe are inspired by God and I just sensed this morning that Jesus was encouraging us to speak his name over the difficult things in our lives as Christians we believe that Jesus's name is the name above every name there is all power and authority in Jesus name there is no other name no other power no other dominion that is stronger or more powerful or higher than Jesus so my encouragement is take a moment now and speak out the things that you want to see breakthrough in breakthrough in the darkness breakthrough over your family is it a broken relationship is it a health issue is it a financial issue just speak out Jesus 
Jesus. Even name that individual, if it's an individual. Name that situation. Name Jesus over confused minds. Jesus over anxiety. Jesus over depression. Jesus over our bodies. We speak Jesus. We speak Jesus. Speak Jesus. We speak Jesus. in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, speak the name of Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for
Thank you, band. Bless you. Thank you. I'm going to invite Tara to come and speak this morning to us. And as she uh, gets herself set up, why don't we pray for Tara? If you'd like to stretch out a hand to pray blessing over her as we pray for her. Father, we thank you for Tara. We thank you, Lord, uh, that you love her, that you know her. And we thank you, Lord, for uh, the word that you have downloaded to her. And we thank you, Lord, that your word is powerful and uh, is um, able to transform hearts and lives and minds and wills. And we ask, Lord, as we hear your word this morning through Tara, would you do that in us and with us? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless you. Amen. So, how on earth do you follow Amy or Ewing? <laughs> All week I've been imagining that this is maybe what David Moyes felt like preparing to take over from Sir Alex Ferguson. <laughs> the very definition of a tough act to follow. But let's give it a go, shall we? Um, we're coming towards the end of the series that we've been going through thinking about becoming disciples or being disciples of Jesus, about having him transform us. And then Ollie, uh, a couple of weeks ago, started us thinking about the last section of this key verse that we've been thinking about together, about going for Jesus. So let's just remind ourselves um, of what that key verse in Matthew 4 says as we begin. And in this verse, we see Jesus approaching Peter and Andrew as they are fishing and telling them, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Or come follow me and I will send you out to fish for people. Andrew, Peter, all of the other disciples were going to be first in line to hear from Jesus about the kingdom of God. To understand that he was the Messiah, the Son of God. They would see him perform miracles. They would hear him teach. They would see him crucified and resurrected from the dead. And right here from the very start, Jesus is letting them know that part of their role will be to tell other people about him, to share with other people what they have seen what they have heard, and what they have experienced. <clears throat> and as Jesus' disciples today, he asks us to do exactly the same, to share what we know about him with other people. And so that's what we're going to spend a bit of time thinking about this morning, and also think about how we might do that. But firstly, let's just think briefly about why we should tell people about Jesus, aside from the fact that he told us to. Unsurprisingly, for those of us who are members of St. Mungo's, it's because we want to be love to people. That's our vision as a church. And if we believe that what we have, that what we know, that what we have experienced of the love of Jesus is good news, not just for us, but for all people everywhere, then the most loving thing we can do is to share that news with other people so that they have a chance to hear it. That's really what it boils down to. We don't have to be eloquent or persuasive. We don't have to convince anybody of anything. Everyone will make up their own mind what they think. But as followers of Jesus, we are told to love other people and part of that love is to let them know the good news of Jesus. That he loves us. That he wants a relationship with us. That he died to take the punishment for all of the wrong that we have done. And that he rose again so that we can know that death is not the end of the story. That is good news. Now, you might say, well, Tara, that all sounds very good in theory, but in practice, it feels quite different because I'm never really very sure what to say. And I would say, I hear you. I'm with you. 
it's a challenge for me as well. And so let's take a bit of time this morning to think about this together, and then hopefully by the end, we'll maybe feel a little bit more equipped about doing that. So I think one of the easiest ways for us to share the good news of Jesus is to bear witness. Now, what do I mean by that? So a witness is someone who sees or experiences something important for others to know about. Jesus told his disciples in Acts 1, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. <clears throat> to be a witness or to bear witness is simply to tell others what you saw or what you experienced. That's it. And if you think about it, we do this all the time. All people do. Did you see that game yesterday? I mean, let's maybe not have that as a good example, Chris. You've put your England rugby shirt back on, that's mean. Did you hear that new song by Beyonce? Have you tried that new coffee shop? They've got amazing scones. I'm always up for a scone recommendation, by the way. How do we bear witness about Jesus? We just share what we've seen him do. You might be chatting with somebody, they ask you, you know, what you did the night before, and you say, do you know what, I was, I was at house group, and it was really good because I was feeling a bit anxious about something, and my friends prayed for me. Today, I feel a lot more peaceful. Catherine Grant had the opportunity to do this recent, re recently. Some of you will know Catherine, who comes to the 10.30 service and sometimes is singing, and she had broken her arm really quite badly in a couple of places. And she went back to the doctor for her 12-week checkup, and she was able to show that she'd made quite a remarkable recovery. She was able to move her arm and demonstrate that for the doctor. And when he did, he said that it was amazing. And she said, well, yeah, I've been really faithful in my exercises, but I also believe in the power of prayer. And lots of people have been praying for me. That's bearing witness. Sharing your experience. Telling your story or a bit of your story. Maybe somebody shares something with you, a particular anxiety they have, and, and you might be able to say, yeah, do you know what? I used to be really anxious about some stuff as well, and then some people prayed for me, and it's been a lot better. Maybe I could pray for you too. Maybe if someone's really interested in what you're talking about as you answer their questions, you could invite them to just come and see for themselves. Andrew brought Peter, his brother, to meet Jesus. In John's Gospel, a Samaritan woman meets Jesus at the well when she goes to collect water, and they have a significant conversation. And as part of that, Jesus shares with her that he is the Messiah. And she goes back to the town and she tells everyone, come and see the man who told me everything I ever did. She bore witness to her encounter with Jesus. And we can simply do the same. And I think that the way we do that is really important. And so the second thing that we're going to think about this morning is being yourself. You are unique. Your blend of gifts and talents, your personality, your interests, the place you take up in the world, the people that you know, and the relationships that you have with them are all specific to you. And so the way that you can and choose to share your faith is unique to you as well. Maybe you might be able to use some of your spiritual gifts or your practical gifts or your position in life as a way to bear witness. Maybe you're artistic and God wants to use your creativity to share faith with other people. My friend Chris is an artist, and he quite often sits in the pub and paints pictures of things that he feels like God's put in his heart. And people are drawn over to chat with him about what he's painting, and he's able to have conversations about faith with the people that he meets. Maybe you're into a particular sport. God has placed you in a club or on a team. Maybe you're a musician and you play in a group. Maybe you're on a committee or in a group of friends. And in all of those places, you're the only person who's a Christian. God wants to use who you are, 
where you are and how he's made you to bear witness for him. Those of you who are rugby fans might recognize this guy, Jason Robinson. He's a retired rugby player. He played for Sale England and the Lions, if you're a rugby union fan, or Wigan England and Great Britain, if you're a rugby league fan. And when he was at Wigan as a young professional player, he said this, I was extremely successful at my job. I was financially secure. I had everything material that I could want, but I had relationship problems. I was having great success on the park, but off it, my problems were overwhelming me. It got to the stage that I could be out drinking six nights a week. On the outside, everything was great. I was earning a lot of money, I had a fast car, nice clothes, people wanted to be associated with me. People probably thought, I want what he's got. But inside, I was empty. I was searching for something. I was looking for happiness in money, in possessions, in drinking, in relationships. But none of these could fill the space within me. And so into that place came this guy, Inga Tuigamala, a Samoan player who was a Christian. And Jason Robinson said this, I couldn't work out why he was so happy. He turned up every morning with a smile from ear to ear. But he didn't drink, he didn't smoke, he didn't sleep around, he didn't have the nicest car in the car park. Inga never pushed his views onto me, but if I ever wanted someone to talk to, he would always be there for me. He spoke to me by how he lived, much more than by anything he said. He had something special about him. I didn't quite know what it was, but I knew he had something I wanted. Inga Tuigamala shone his light brightly where he was placed. And it resulted in Jason Robinson coming to know Jesus. And in turn, shining his light where he was placed and influencing others for Jesus. He used what he was good at and where he was placed to live out an example of the difference that Jesus can make in our lives. That's bearing witness exactly as you are. You are uniquely positioned with the relationships that you have in the places where you spend time to say things about Jesus for Jesus that no one else can. You don't have to do it the same way that someone else does it. You just have to do it in the way that he made you. A number of years ago when I was a schools worker, we were working in a particular school in the borough called Hatch End. And my colleague had been the one mainly to be placed in that school. And then he moved on just before the end of the term. And so one of the Christian teachers came to me and he said, listen, we love having you in the school, um, but from next year, from September, we'd love to even get you more involved. We'd love you to just come in in the first term, come into all of the, the year one classrooms, come and hang out, just get to know the young people. And then at lunchtime, we'd love you to be a real presence in the school, go into the playground, just hang out, get to know all the young people. And I was smiling and nodding, going, this is an incredible opportunity. And oh my goodness, this is not me. <laughs> this is terrifying. You take those 800 young people, you sit them down in an assembly hall, and I will stand up and speak to them, no problem. You put them all in a playground and ask me to just go and hang out, and I'm like, <gasps> no! But I obviously said, well, of course we will, because I was never going to turn that opportunity down. And then thankfully in the summer, we recruited a second schools worker. And on the first day of the job, I sat down with him and I told him about this opportunity and his eyes lit up. And he said, oh, that sounds incredible. Please, can I go and do that? I said, oh, all right, I'll, I'll let you have that. <laughs> he did it and he was amazing at it. How has he made you? And where has he placed you to bear witness? And if you're not sure, Ask him, and he'll show you. And then in all of these things, I think there's one more thing that we need to be thinking about, and that is being prepared. 
Because if we're bearing witness, if we're being good news to people, if we're walking around with stickers on our phones that say, ask me about Jesus, then it's probably a good idea to consider what we might say. As we read in 1 Peter 3, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. What shall we say when someone sees the sticker and asks us about Jesus? Or when there's a discussion at lunchtime and somebody says, well, you're a Christian, aren't you? What's that all about? What do you think about this? Well, firstly, as Amy or Ewing suggested last week, keep it simple and initially short. Just say one or two things and then maybe ask a question. Have it be a conversation. What else is it that they would like to know? What are they interested in finding out? And if they have lots of questions and you start to feel a little bit overwhelmed, you can always say, do you know what? That's a really good question. I need to go away and have a bit of a think about that. I might need to read some stuff about that. Can I come back to you and we can carry on this conversation? It might be that if they have lots of questions, you could say, do you know what? We have an alpha course at church. We run that and it's a great place to come and have discussion and bring all of those questions. Or maybe you think, do you know, it'd be really good to have a resource of some kind just to help me either prepare for these conversations or maybe in the moment themselves. And there's all kinds of options of what you might be able to use. There's an organization called Agape UK. And on the resource page of their website, they have all kinds of different resources that are there to help us, from wristbands to apps that you can have on your phone, either for you to prepare and think ahead of time of the kinds of things you might say, or maybe in the moment of the conversation, to be able to pull up the app and, and work through some stuff with someone. And the QR code that is on the screen, that'll take you directly to the resource page um, of the website. But if not, just look up Agape UK, um, and on the resource page, you'll find loads of stuff on there. Or maybe, like me, you just prefer old-fashioned paper. Um, and you think, Do you know what, if I just had something that I could have to hand, that I could bring out at a particular moment. And so it might be that something like the Why Jesus booklet would work, which is really simple and asks, answers some of those questions about why Jesus, why are people excited about him? Why is he relevant today? Why should anyone bother to find out? And you think, do you know what, if I had one of those and it was just tucked in my bag or my backpack all the time, or it was tucked in my glove compartment or somewhere else, that if I end up having one of those conversations, I've got something to hand that I can use or give to somebody to go away and read. If that feels like that would be helpful, there's a bundle of them on either of the speakers at either side. Please do come and take one at the end of the service and, and tuck it away somewhere. Or if you're a visitor here today and you're thinking, actually, what is this all about? I'm not sure. Then please feel free to come and take one of these away and have a read. Part of being prepared to give an answer for the hope that we have is being equipped. So take these away, have a read, have a think. Because we need to know what we might say to people if they ask us about Jesus. Because we never know when that might happen. Or indeed at what stage along the journey that they might be when they ask us. I had a a girl that I knew at university called Emma, and she was uh, a friend of a bunch of Christian friends of mine. But Emma wasn't a Christian, but she was really interested. And she'd been asking lots of questions of these friends, and they'd brought her along to all of the Christian Union meetings, and they'd brought her to church, and she was really interested, really seeking. But she didn't ever come to faith while we were at university. So we got to the end of term, and everybody left and scattered and went their own way. And quite, we were thinking like, oh gosh, I wonder what's going to happen. Well, what happened was that Emma went to Exeter to do a postgrad in teacher training. And very shortly after arriving there, completely on her own, not knowing anyone, she decided that that was the moment she needed to come to Jesus and become a Christian. But she suddenly was looking around going, well, how do I do that? I don't know. I don't have any Christian friends here. And so in the halls of residence, she'd seen a girl who seemed really nice, and she thought she'd seen a Bible in her room. 
And so she went and she knocked on her door and said, excuse me, are you a Christian? And the girl said, yes. And she was like, I need to become a Christian, like now. <laughs> Can you help me? And that girl was obviously prepared. And she said, yeah, come on in. Let's sit down and we can just have a bit of a chat and we can pray. We never know when the conversation might arise. I've had chats with Jesus, or with you, I have chats, I've had chats with Jesus. I've had chats about Jesus when I've been on a train journey. I've had a chat about Jesus when I've been having my legs waxed. That was really bizarre. But the conversation came up and I was not about to say no. There are other times where being prepared is about being prepared to say yes when there's a nudge from the Lord. Because he wants you to speak to someone in some moment that he gives you. A few years ago, Adrian and I were on holiday down in the south of England, and I was just kind of standing, uh, waiting for Adrian, as I often do. Um, and out of nowhere, I was just, you know, thinking about absolutely nothing. And out of nowhere dropped into my head the phrase Billionaire's Boys Club, which I knew was the clothing company of the musician Pharrell. I just knew that as a fact. But I'd never, I was not remotely interested. I'd never seen anyone wearing any of those clothing, didn't know anything about it. But this just name dropped into my head long enough to me go, for me to go, that's really random. And then it went and we carried on with our day. I didn't think anything more about it until several days later, as part of the same holiday, we're at Silverstone for the MotoGP. Thousands of people around, and I see a guy wearing a Billionaire's Boys Club t-shirt. First person I've ever seen wearing that item of clothing, and I had this moment where I thought, I think this is a God thing. I think I'm maybe meant to go and talk to him. But I'm currently standing in a really long line for the ladies. And he's also just gone and joined a really long line for the gents' toilet. And that's going to be an even more bizarre conversation to have. In the, and so I'm like, I'm not doing it now, Lord. That's not happening. <laughs> so it's like, OK, if I'm really meant to chat to him, you know, I'll, I'll go into the bathroom, come back out again. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll see him. So went into the bathroom, came back out again. I'm kind of looking around. Can't see him anywhere. Find Adrian. We started kind of walking. And then in amongst the thousands of people, he appeared again. And I was like, that's him. I need to go and speak to him. And I went running off, and Adrian's kind of coming after me, just looking, like, what? I has no idea what's going on. And so I went up to this guy, and I was like, excuse me. I was like, I'm, this is going to sound really strange, I'm sure, but I'm a Christian, and I, I think God wants me to come and talk to you. Um, I, have you got any pain in your body, anything that, you know, I could maybe pray for? And he was like, uh, no, I'm all good. And I was like, okay. Well, in that case, I think that maybe God just wants me to come and tell you that he loves you. And he's like, okay. But this boy had a friend with him. And I was like, I mean, he loves you too. I just felt that he really specifically wanted me to tell this guy. As you can see, I was not eloquent at all. But in that moment, I just was like, I think I'm meant to talk to this guy. And I, I got his name, and I said, great to meet you. Hope you enjoy the rest of the Grand Prix. And off we go. And then for weeks, I just, I just prayed for him, because I had his name in my mind. And then that was several, several years ago. And then a couple of months ago, in the space of a week, I saw two guys with Billionaire's Boys Club t-shirts on. And it just brought it back into my mind. And I was like, Lord, I don't know where he is. I can't remember his name anymore. But you know where he is. You know what his name is. You know what's going on for him. I'm just going to pray for him. It was really one of those random things. That almost never happens to me. But I was like, you know what, God, if that's if that's the kind of thing that's going to happen and you just need me to be prepared to say yes when there's a nudge, wherever it is, whatever it might be, I'm going to say yes, or at least I'm going to try. Let's be prepared to give an answer for the hope that we have and to speak and demonstrate the good news of Jesus wherever we get the opportunity, whatever that might look like. And hopefully we've seen this morning that there are all kinds of ways for us to do that by simply being ourselves where we are, bearing witness to what we have known and what we have experienced. The only option not available to us if we are disciples of Jesus is to opt out. In Matthew 5, we read, you're here 
to be light, bringing out all of the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there, on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. You know, quite often when people are going away to be missionaries or going on teams or, you know, that kind of thing, we have commissioning services for them. But the reality is that we have all been commissioned already by Jesus to go to our everyday lives to bear witness for him. And so as we close and pray this morning, I'm going to pray a prayer of commission for every single one of us for today for tomorrow, for this week. Because we have all been commissioned to go and to bear witness. And if you want to be able to say, you know, yes, that's me, I'm going to take that commission and I'm going to go, then you can say your own yes and amen to Jesus at the end of that. So I'm going to invite you to stand if you're able, and I'm going to invite the the band to come back up again. And we're just going to pray together. Father God, thank you for the good news of Jesus. Thank you that we have a story to tell of the difference that he has made in our lives. Thank you that you have made made each and every one of us unique in our character, in our personality, in our interests in our skills and for the unique combination of places where we go to our homes to our neighborhoods to the school gate to the office to the gym to the choir to the football club and Lord you have commissioned us to go and be your witnesses in those places. And Lord, we say yes. Would you help us? Would you strengthen us? Would you equip us to be prepared this week to bear witness to all that we have experienced of you? Would you help us to answer questions? Would you help us to say yes to those nudges when you give them? that we might give a reason for the hope that we have in you. Lord, we give you our yes and our amen. Amen.
Father, we thank you for the joy of being in your presence. We thank you for the invitation that you give us to follow you. We thank you, Jesus, for the joy of being apprentices, of learning from you, from seeing what you do, hearing what you do, and just following and copying. We 
thank you for what you called us to. Holy Spirit, would you come and fill us and equip us as we go out into our days and our weeks that we may be attentive to your voice, attentive to your nudgings, and that you would empower us. We don't do this on our own. You empower us to speak Jesus. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. 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 Our service is over. Please do get some refreshments down the end of the concourse or go and visit the uh, connect point. Please stay around and have lunch with us. And our baptism service is starting at one o'clock.